come back to your slides. Come back to the first two slides. Friends, the most burning problem is tuberculosis, permanent tuberculosis. And the reverse National Tuberculosis Control Program, of which also had a session, was followed by the guidelines given by WHO that the directly observed treatment supervised thrice weekly is the order of the day and they introduced this just 10 years ago. Today, in 2010, they have given the guidelines that in some cases the tri-weekly regimen is not superior, daily regimen is superior. In a decade, they have changed the guidelines. Now, we cannot go back on a national scale where we have invested millions of rupees and then change our treatment. Therefore, directly observed treatments, treatment supervised as practiced by RNTCB will continue for another decade till we see the result. Well, I don't know whether he is here or not. Yes. We can see the guidelines given in many of the trials given by the drugs, including calcium channel blockers, including beta blockers, seeing the day up, seeing the day one, seeing the day up, seeing the day one. This is aspect of the guidelines. Another medical legal aspect of the guidelines is, if you tell the public this is a guideline, when an ordinary practitioner practices something other than the guidelines, he is being asked why. This is exactly the old chiefs like Sam D.P. Moss and others used to say, keep the guidelines always at the same track. Because you dictate to the patient this is to be done for you, which is not the business of a person who has not seen the case. The business of the person to tell the patient do this is the business of the person who has seen the case. Not the group of experts who have sat on the back and said these are the guidelines. This is one of the greatest drama. The tuberculosis, I was surprised in 2000, Darsiman was about to release the book in the chess meeting. Then they objected, said, don't release it. But I said, release the book. Because it has come from WHO, so release the book. That is what we follow. Another thing also, on to the slide, sir. Ah, right, this one, put it on. See, I prepared a talk on bronchial asthma and pregnancy in the APCON 2011, just now concluded. The test books outdated by three years. I asked most of the Bangladeshis whom I know, where should I go and see? You know what answer they gave? Go to the test book 50 years old back. What they have given that tag is still valid. Especially when I, because each drug I was analyzing and presenting. Theophilin versus doxybelin versus acyprophilin. Then among the English and steroids, rectalmethasone, betamethasone, fluticasone, momentasone. They said, go back to the old test. See which has been most trusted in pregnancy and present that in Epigon. Don't go by momentasone because momentasone is only 10 years old. 10 years is a very, very short time in the human 10,000 years history. Therefore, go back to old things. There is a place in certain areas to go back to the old things also. Of course, the Shingutwell's area is very good. Go to PTC end. But other guidelines, sir, one has to take with a bit of salt. Sir, all the guidelines, when they are published, they clearly say it's only guidelines. In the individual patient management, it is the responsibility of the physician or the surgeon who is in charge to take a decision. It is not a, it is not a, a mandatory that there are definitely there will be guiding deviations in an individual patient's Inserted cancer. It is an overall guideline only. What is the implication of the LOC in the living room? I'm sorry, loss of consciousness. Hmm. What's the significance? Indication. Significance. Significance. It is a it is a bad minimum clinical event to say a patient has got a brain injury. Because when a patient is there's a sudden acceleration disinformation. There is a movement of the neurons or the at the axonal uh, receptors level, the uh, interconnections. So the chemically they they don't transmit for some time. So the patients become patient becomes unconscious for a short time. If the impact is very severe, then the the shake is more, the disruptions are more, and then the patient is unconscious for a longer time. If it is a short mild injury, then they recover immediately. So, loss of consciousness is a basic measure of the severity of the injury in primary. Of course, 
in, uh, in added injury. Suppose like a patient has already had injury, has already had a, a CNS disease. In that, the same impact will have more loss of consciousness because it has got no result. So that is the, it is, a, uh, it is a minimum requirement to say a patient has got a brain injury. No, no loss of consciousness does it rule out brain injury? Brain injury. No loss of consciousness. No, does it rule out? It's a generalized injury. See, supposing a patient has got a, uh, a focal injury and there's a depressed fracture, which uh, the fractured bone penetrates the dura and the brain, there's a focal injury. There'll be no loss of consciousness. Yeah, there'll be no loss of consciousness. How many hours after injury would you advise a CT? If you do it very early, you would not do anything. Yeah. The, uh, of course, if the patient is unconscious, there are definite, again, there are definite uh, guidelines in that. The patient, uh, immediate CT is required if the patient is uh, having abnormal people and uh, if uh, GCS is not, if the GCS is not improving within the first few minutes. It should be done immediately. Otherwise, generally, if the patient is regaining consciousness, GCS is improving, then uh, it is 14-15, uh, then we wait for 2 hours, 3 hours, and then we do it. And, uh, in uh, NIC guidelines, they say if the patient comes late night, if he's conscious, then we observe and do it next day morning. That is the recommendation, but uh, uh, generally, we try to do within uh, 2 or 3 hours is the usual timing. But uh, if you find a small hematoma as a short, it has to be repeated in six hours time. Thank you very much, sir. The next speaker is a